You know, I, I had an interesting three days, Rob, and I'll, I'll share that with you. So our old property, remember our old property across from the airport? We've yep. been there since 1960 before we moved. Um, sold this week. Okay. So, um, and the, the buyer, you know, part of his conditions was we had to have anything that was ours out by yesterday. Okay. Midnight. Okay. So, um, because I had pretty much removed everything that was of value, then you always have an executive who wants you to remove the stuff that's of no value. So we had to put a team together, go over there and start removing some shelves that cost me more in labor than they were worth. Of course, of course. So we're taking all these shelves apart. It's cold, and, you know, and then, and then all of a sudden I get a call, and uh, we had an issue with a client that— um, a, a piece of equipment they needed delivered today. The one thing they asked for was a radio, and we didn't have it. Oh, wow. So I had to scramble all around town, get the radio. Um, then yesterday, at the end of the day, we had uh, I, I had another employee who had to call in sick. I have three of my key employees in accounting, in parts, and in sales all out this week for vacation. I'm running around, and then finally I'm about to leave the office at 7 o'clock when we're finishing up a piece of equipment that's being delivered for the most important demo of the year, to a large sugar company in Florida, worked late to get it put together, and I pick up the phone. It's a member of my family saying, "Don't forget to pick up the salt for the water softener." <laughs> oh. So 7:30 at night, I'm I'm running over to uh, to Lowe's and I'm loading big bags of salt into the back of my truck, and you know I'm headed to the house, and then I get another call. Don't forget to pick up some cold medicine for the grandkids, and I'm I'm going through all this and. When I get to the house, I throw the bags of salt into the little red wagon because that's all I could find. Uh-huh. It was my granddaughter's little red wagon. And as I'm pulling the salt back to the water softener, I trip over one of their toys and I fall flat into a pile of mud. And I'm literally inundated with mud and I've got salt all over the place. I turned over wagon and I just, I want shaking my fist up towards the sky and I want to scream. And I look over and through the window, my granddaughter's watching me. And she's watching me, she reaches over, and she offers me her bottle. And I realize at that moment, I have so much to be thankful for. I realize at that moment that despite the craziness of the day, the hurriedness in which I had to do things, and, and the, how consumed I was with doing all these things, that I had so much to be thankful for. I had healthy grandkids. I had a great job. I worked for a wonderful company. I live in the best place in the world. I eat some of the best food in existence every day. I'm surrounded by people I love. I have so much to be thankful for. So article equipment and the message we have, and and David Langley has a message for you today, is that be reminded that no matter what your circumstances are, your situation, that you truly have a lot to be thankful for. And use the time that you have this holiday season to stop and thank your creator and thank the members of your family and the people who surround you, how appreciative you are for them. Because that time is special and can often be limited. Wow. All those things you had going on and still, you know, can sit back and say, Guess what? There are a lot of people who want to have my problems. And, and whether someone offers you a bottle of formula or a bottle of whiskey, <laughs> yes. at least you're offered a bottle. Dave, thanks for coming in. No, thank you, man. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy and- Thanksgiving to you uh, and to all the turkeys down at Ardco.